I know it's been a while since uh, I put up my last video. I've been really thinking in terms of what is the purpose or what is the motivation of the things that drive me. Uh, and I recently read a book called Wanting by Luke Burgess. It's, it's a fairly new book and it's, it was a really good book for me. Uh, and he talks about the idea of the desires that we have and, and he explodes it in a very with a combination of philosophy, uh, like a bit of modern way of thinking around that, uh, some psychology thoughts around it, uh, a lot of, I mean, he, he leveraged off a lot of the work that Rene Girard did, which talks about the desires that we have. And when I initially, uh, I got to know about this book through Ki Wai, and um, it really struck a chord with me, especially like where we live in a society that encourages, we've got so many different desires, they're coming so many through different angles, like Instagram is giving us ideas, we see what other people are doing, uh, and at a subliminal level, we are slowly being driven to desire certain things. Even if you think like the big technology company, all the data is being aggregated so that they better target the things that you want and the desire. So the key thing, one of the biggest takeaways that I got from this book, which kind of gave me a bit of a pause, was the idea that the majority of the things that we actually think are our own unique desires or something that we came across are, to a great extent, not actually stuff to do with the thick desires, our, our own desires. It's like, a very good example I can give you is if you look at a little child, like, a little baby like they get to learn and they find a place in the world by mimicking what's around them you know they want to speak that they want to be more independent because that's what they're seeing they they fall in love with the phones because that's what adults are doing uh as an example and it's cute you know when you see a young child imitating the adults it's like oh you know it's whatever but at some point in time in our lives it stops being cute like to mimic other people or to copy other people but what actually happens is that that whole influence of our desires is that it changes we think that we're doing our own thing but what we actually don't know is that we are part of a system where our desires are being determined by other things at a subconscious level and so many things around it like one of the things like i mean to uh, to quote like a specific quote he say Girard discovered that most of what we desire is mimetic or imitative and it's not intrinsic Humans learn through imitation to want same things other people want. Just they learn how to speak the same language and play the same by the same cultural rules. Imitation plays a far more pervasive role in our society than ev than anyone had ever openly acknowledged. Like to think about it, like that are we actually imitating each other? And then he then breaks down in the, in the same book. He came up with two con concepts where he talks about freshmanistan and celebristan. And he was leveraging off the work of Nicolas Deleb, um, where he used the stand word. Basically, in Celebristan is that we are imitating people that we're never going to be able to compete with at the same level. So these are your celebrities, you know, the ones that we see. We see Kanye West, maybe it's Kim Kardashian for you, or any maybe any superstar. When I look at LeBron James or everything, or the late Kobe Bryant, I'm like, oh, Mamba mentality, you know, being the best version of myself, that kind of thing, like. That's celebristan, like they're never going to be in the path. And then there's freshmanistan. Freshmanistan, these are the people that could, you know, your workmate or somebody within your same peer group, somebody that you went to college with and you sort of see the progress that they're making in their life or perceived progress or whatever it is, or even LinkedIn. LinkedIn is even worse because, you know, it's uh, it really brings this freshmanistan thing where we are all at, at at a very deep level, we're kind of imitating and competing with each other. And sometimes that then leads to the feeling like, oh, I don't like those people or I, oh, uh, whatever. And usually that feeling is actually coming from sameness. So what the, the main key takeaway, or I guess what Luke Burgess is trying to teach us in his book or the lessons that I got is we need to deconstruct the ideas that we think are ours and to actually take a pause and say, what are my motivational drivers? Like one of the things, what he called thick desires, because sometimes we may not realize that we're actually running on other people's agendas. Or, I mean, maybe you may refuse that if it's said in that specific way to say that. Uh, but he actually talks about the romantic lie, which is a delusion. That's the story people tell 
about why they make certain choices because to, to a place of thick desires where the desires are actually our own desires he says what does that even mean it's not that we should or can be free of mimetic desire being anti-mimetic is not like Nico N N Nassim Taleb's anti-fragile it's not merely the opposite of mimetic being anti-mimetic is having the ability the freedom to counteract destructive forces of desire something mimetic is an, an accelerant something anti-mimetic is a decelerant an anti-mimetic action or person is a sign of contradiction to a culture that likes to flow downstream so it's about like just thinking about how yourself and then one of the the ideas that was also in the book was around that maybe the goals that you have are actually not your goals i was like what what do you mean my goals are not my goals they are my goals they're the things that i want but it's like when you layer on this different external drivers of desire which maybe are not really packed at those things which is why now the majority of the people like maybe you wanted to you, your career to go in a certain way and after a long time you actually discover that you know what this path that i have been on is actually not really aligned with what i thought it would but at some point in time based of the the agents of desire that are driving what we think is good or what is we think is the, the desirable thing maybe it's actually not aligned to your deep core motivations so i found that like wow safe for me personally one of my key motivations is exploration a challenge uh and other things and therefore for me to develop like thick desires and the things that are actually going to be lasting i need to pick that on my own drivers so i almost have to activate an anti like you say the decelerant like instead of accelerating to always having external interest to move to a more intrinsic level and be more conscious of how everything around you from social media from what we call the american dream the australian dream or whatever dream you call it uh whether it's actually your dream or not think about it it's it, i i just thought that was something that was really and one of the things that he also mentioned was that our desires are only as big or as small as the models that we are exposed to so fictional characters who model great think desires can be a counterbalance to real life models of weak thin desires um so this book was really good it's really good for uh for everybody to just take a bit of a pause and just think about like what are we doing is this what i actually want is this something that is my own thing so anyway as i as i wrap up my main thought around all of this is for us to just think that are your desires your desires or your you've been caught up in the world of leaving other desires or and maybe that there's nothing wrong with that like i'm not my the point of this or what i got from the book is not so much to say that you should feel bad just to be more intentional about your own like what is driving you what is you know ways it come from and not fall for the romantic lie with the romantic lie is that the idea that our choices are completely autonomous independent and self-directed someone under the power of the romantic lie never thinks of their behavior as mimetic so it's like okay i want to have thick desires you know that you know that they've had time to solidify and become like part of something that we like as opposed to thin desires which are rooted in ephemeral superficial things and they're fleeting mimetic says that dominate most of life when it is lived unintentionally and easily infected by mimetic phenomena so i really found this book quite good like and i've become more conscious like funny story i just saw the latest range rover video advert like a friend of mine just sent it, and and that car looks beautiful it's the highest level of elegance and everything and i was just thinking about about it at the lens of mimetic desire in that the people who came came up with that and they gave it to like the youtube influencers to do the adverts do the video so that it triggers that part of us where they they've dropped a seed of desire like where if i actually had not seen that it probably wouldn't have driven me and a very good example is like when i go to the supermarket i find that when i go in there the way that they have designed everything from when you go where you see the chocolates and everything that you're highly likely to end up living with things that you didn't come with because they have positioned in such a way that they're going to trigger the part of you you're like ah oh, maybe i would like this so this book was good and i think it's worth checking out for us to just think about like 
are we truly in charge of our own lives do we have are we developing thick desires of the things that are actually truly important to us or we're just going on and on lying to ourselves believing the romantic lie that we are in charge of our own desires so anyway i thought this was really good and i enjoyed this book see you on the next video ciao